How's it going everyone? It's Harvey from Weather Spawn Bad Thousand. Today is February 5th, 2022. As a day, we're gonna forecast the 2022 hurricane season. Will this be a more active hurricane season than usual? Or will this be uh, an average season when it comes to the amount of storms and hurricanes and major hurricanes? Or will we see a below average hurricane season? I'll answer all your questions in this video regarding the hurricane season but before i begin make sure to subscribe if you want to see more about the lake on make sure to like if you like this video and make sure to turn on post notifications if you want to see even more weather lake content so to begin to really begin the forecast the 2022 hurricane season of course we're still ways away from the actual start of the hurricane season which is in june 1st but we can forecast the hurricane season based on the sea surface temperatures of the nino 3.4 region and the sea surface temperatures in the future so if we were to take a look at the nino 3.4 the sea surface temperatures in the nino 3.4 region you see that the sea surface temperatures are well below average in this region as we're not only in a la nina phase but we're in a strong la nina at this point as you can see based on sea surface temperatures right around december and january however if you've been paying attention over the past several weeks and if you take a look at this chart you see that the sea surface temperatures are now steadily rising in the nino 3.4 region which is the region synonymous with forecasting whether or not we're experiencing a La Nina, an El Nino, or a neutral season when it comes to the Eastern Pacific um, um, pattern when it comes to the Nino um, 3.4 region. So um, so this trend um, for warmth is very important in the for um, right, um, right around the Nino 3.4 region because it could determine what to expect within the next couple months and into the hurricane season. And the Nino um, and whether we experience a La Nina or El Nino plays a big role in terms of how many storms or hurricanes we'll receive in the hurricane season. And you see that we're in the month of February right now. Of course, we're in a La Nina. But if we take a look at the forecast over the next several months, the sea surf temperatures are expected to rise to the point where we the forecast is more likely that we're gonna experience a, a neutral phase by the time we reach a hurricane season where by june it's more likely than not we're gonna experience a neutral phase as there's above a 50 percent chance of a neutral phase occurring during the month of june and head into the more active months you see that by july and august you see that the highest probability is a neutral phase during the heart of the hurricane season but you see that la nina there's maybe around 30 percent chance by july and august and for uh, el nino it seems unlikely at less than 25 percent even headed further and further into the hurricane season and into 2022 so i'd expect a neutral phase headed into this hurricane season based on the based on the rising of sea surf temperatures um I, but i don't think that the sea surf temperatures in the Nino 3.4 region are necessarily going to rise at at a fast enough rate to evolve into a El Nino phase by the time we reach the hurricane season. So the most likely scenario, I'd say, is a neutral phase, maybe a La Nina phase, if the war if the warming process of the sea surf temperatures isn't as fast as initially anticipated, but we should expect a neutral phase for this hurricane season, which pretty much is more, which in this case, a neutral phase, I'd say would more lean on a slightly more active hurricane season because a La Nina and a neutral phase aren't that much different when it comes to the conditions they bring. But, um, but it won't necessarily, during a neutral phase, it won't necessarily be hyperactive if we were basing it off the Enzo outlook just alone but there's still more we need to uncover before we could jump to that conclusion so if I were to show you guys on um, what typically happens during um, a neutral phase uh, El Nino phase and a La Nina phase you see that during a La Nina phase the it's a uh, typically a lot cooler and drier over the equatorial eastern pacific as a result of the cooler than average sea surf temperatures of course there's going to be less of an upward motion right along the eastern equatorial pacific in this region so as a result a lot more sinking air occurs within the eastern pacific overall where there's fewer hurricanes in the eastern pacific 
um, as a result of more stable air and a stronger vertical wind shear. And we typically, and as a result of the amount of sinking air that's located in the Eastern Pacific, we typically see more of a rising motion right along the Atlantic because since there's so much sinking air, there's only so much areas where um, since the atmosphere pretty much wants to even out the amount of sinking air and rising air in the atmosphere anywhere in the world, there's more likely of a chance that we're going to see more buoyancy with the air molecules and the water vapor right around the Atlantic um, atmosphere. And that should allow for less vertical wind shear that should allow for less stability in the atmosphere that will enhance tropical cyclone development in the Atlantic as a result of a La Nina phase. But it's completely opposite when we look at uh, El Nino phase where you do see that fewer hurricanes are, um, at, um, as a result of a warmer and more moist environment right around the Eastern Pacific. And this because there's so much rising air in this area that, that the air that rises aloft needs to sink somewhere and it typically sink is sinks right along the Atlantic coast which brings a lot more atmospheric stability as well as stronger vertical wind shear as a result of the amount of low pressure systems and tropical cyclones developing in the eastern Pacific which typically brings a lot more wind shear coming from the west which slows down tropical cyclone development during an El Nino phase so that's pretty much the difference right now the forecast is a neutral phase which pretty much brings maybe around average um uh, an average amount of tropical cyclone development maybe a little bit above average because the neutral phase does lean a little bit more to a la nina phase and even if we are in a neutral phase by the time this summer comes or the hurricane season comes it isn't it isn't really going to be, I'd say, a very um, well-defined neutral phase. And what I mean by that is that I still think the sea surface temperatures in the Nino 3.4 region will still be slightly below average at a point where it might lean a little bit more to maybe a weak La Nina than a neutral phase, than a straight-up neutral phase. So I'd say based on the Enzo outlook headed into this hurricane season, we could expect slightly more tropical cyclones than average, but this is based off on the Enzo outlook, not the Atlantic sea surface temperatures, which I'm going to show you guys right now. So another thing we need to take a look at is the Atlantic multi-decadal oscillation. And pretty much this, the Atlantic multi-decadal um, decadal oscillation pretty much is the pattern where Atlantic sea surface temperatures um, vary between every so few decades as this is a long duration type pattern where the Atlantic for a long period of time, I'm talking about decades of years, is typically typically has sea surface temperatures warmer than average as opposed to sea surface temperatures cooler than average. And if we were to take as typically during a positive Atlantic multi-decadal oscillation, we see warmer than average sea surface temperatures for most of the Atlantic, while during a negative Atlantic multi-decadal oscillation, we see cooler than average sea surface temperatures. And if we were to take a look at the Atlantic multi-decadal oscillation over the past pretty much 100 years, you see that ever since, I'd say, the late 1990s, we've been in a positive Atlantic a multi-decadal oscillation and you see that headed close to around 2022 we're still in that phase where most of the atlantic is experiencing warmer than average sea surface temperatures as we've been in a positive phase for pretty much over two decades now so and it does seem like it's going to slow down headed into 2022 so we could expect warmer than average sea surface temperatures throughout the atlantic for this year which is part of the reason why we've seen so many consecutive hurricane seasons where it's been a lot more active than usual compared to the long-term 100-year average because we've been in a positive Atlantic multi-decadal oscillation for over two decades now. So typically, we're more prone to receive a more active hurricane season than usual. And it seems like it's going to be the same for 2022 because if we compare the Atlantic multi decadal oscillation from a positive phase to a negative phase, you see that there's very, very, there's a very big difference when it comes to um, when it comes to the sea surface temperatures, where the Atlantic is a lot warmer than average during a positive than a negative phase, so we're more likely to see 
a more active hurricane season as a result of warmer than average sea surface temperatures as this um, Atlantic multi-decadal oscillation is expected to continue, at least a positive phase is expected to continue headed into 2022. And if you were to take a look at the sea surface temperatures right now, you see that um, in the main development region, of course, the sea surface temperatures are below 80 degrees where in the month of February. So this is one of the coldest months when it comes to sea surface temperatures throughout the Atlantic. And it doesn't really start warming up until I'd say we get into late March and early April. That's when we begin to see sea surface temperatures warming up for the hurricane season. However, we do have some areas where the sea surface temperatures are above 80 degrees right along the Caribbean um, islands. So that's certainly something to keep in mind. And while the sea surface temperatures are, look certainly cold throughout the Atlantic, it, it's warm, believe it or not, these sea surface temperatures for most of the Atlantic are warmer than average as I'm gonna show you right now as look at that the pretty much the entirety of the atlantic is experiencing warmer than average sea surface temperatures with a couple of sec of exceptions such as maybe right along the coast of florida where you have seen a multitude of troughs and polar vortexes move through as of course in miami you guys recently experienced the coldest temperature you've experienced in over a decade so it's definitely um it's definitely predictable to experience cooler than average sea surface temperatures as well for this time of the year and this extends to north carolina as well but this is right along the coast as most tropical cyclones typically develop and strengthen well into the open water rather than along the coast so the so these cooler these pockets of cooler than average sea surface temperatures won't offset the fact that Pretty much the entirety of the, the northern Atlantic is experiencing warmer than average sea surface temperatures with, again, more emphasis maybe on the central Gulf of Mexico and the Caribbean. And what's interesting is that over the past pretty much several years, we've been just experiencing much warmer than average sea surface temperatures in the northern Atlantic, which has led to a lot more subtropical um, storms developing right around northern Atlantic and that could continue into 2022 which could sort of inflate the um, the amount of storms you experience for the 2022 hurricane season so so the fact that we're expected to receive uh, most likely expected to receive a neutral phase head into this um into this hurricane season which could maybe lean to a weak la nina i would not rule that out and combining that with the fact that we're expecting to receive warmer than average sea surface temperatures throughout the atlantic it's pretty much safe to say that we're going to experience a much more active well i shouldn't say much more but definitely another more active hurricane season than usual even when we compare even when we compare um this year to a shorter term average between let's say the past two decades where the hurricane season it was a given that most years were going to be more active than usual thanks to a pattern we're in where we're in a positive atlantic um atlantic decadal oscillation but um, even when we compare the 100 year, at, I mean, the 20 year average, it's going to be more active than usual because it, we're still going to be in the neutral phase, um, which still brings slightly above average hurricanes than usual. Um, definitely more than, let's say, an El Nino would bring. And of course, we're going to see warmer than average sea surface temperatures in the Atlantic, which will allow for more tropical cyclone development to occur. Now, you might be wondering where I expect the most storm formations for this hurricane season. So, like I said, pretty much for most of the Atlantic, I'm expecting it to be above average when it comes to storm formation. This includes the main Devon region. And I'm including the areas closer to the northeast because we, I've been noticing a pattern where um, tropical cyclones have been developing further up northward. And we're seeing a pattern where we're more now more likely to see tropical cyclones move further northward and closer to the northeast. So I do expect it. Uh, I do expect tropical cyclone activity to be above average right around northeast once again for 2022. So make sure to keep that in mind. But I expect the most storm formation to be right along the central Gulf of Mexico again because that's where the sea surface temperatures are 
definitely the anomalies are definitely the highest when it comes to how much above average sea surface temperatures are so i'd expect the most storms to develop right around the gulf of mexico and the eastern i mean the western caribbean so make sure to definitely keep that in mind that we're expecting to receive a more active than usual hurricane season and the gulf coast states could be especially impacted by a more hyperactive hurricane season um now let me show you guys my official forecast when it comes to the hurricane season so um so pretty much um the average the new average which is more shorter term than let's say the 100 year average because it gives a better perspective of what to expect because um because it's hard to really say a year is necessarily above average for a lot of you guys since of course you guys haven't um a lot of you guys haven't lived for over a hundred years to really know what's at to really know what's the uh, what's above average so i decided to go for a more shorter term average approach between 1991 and 2020 which is still a big enough sample size to represent what's the average amount of tropical cyclones you typically experience during your hurricane season but not so big to where it includes years that you might have not experienced before 1991 so um, if we were to take a look at the average, there, um, typically between 1991 and 2020, the average amount of storms is 14, the average amount of hurricanes is right around 7, and the average amount of major hurricanes is right around 3. I'm expecting a little bit more than that since we're going to be likely in the neutral phase, which does ring slightly more tropical cyclones than average, as well as the fact that sea surface temperatures will be higher than average in the Atlantic. I'm expecting 18 named storms, 9 hurricanes, and one more major hurricane than usual at four major hurricanes but you guys need to keep in mind that take this with a grain of salt because the uh, hurricane season forecasts change drastically especially once we're in the hurricane season um to give you an example during the 20 before the 2020 hurricane season began this was around the ballpark when it came to a forecast from most meteorologists where they were expecting around 18 total storms nine hurricanes and four major hurricanes but of course as a hurricane season went on meteorologists kept revising their forecasts upwards upwards and upwards until of course it became evident that the 2020 hurricane season was extremely hyperactive and the most hyperactive hurricane season in history so it's definitely a little bit tricky to predict the hurricane season and how active it will be but um, I'd say it's your best bet to at least experience a uh, more active than usual hurricane season, but don't, um, don't, but don't necessarily take this, um, to heart, um, this forecast because it's suddenly subject to change as we head closer to our hurricane season. And remember, whether this hurricane season is less active, average, or more active, remember it only takes one tropical storm, one hurricane, one major hurricane. To completely change the lives of a whole entire community or an area so you don't want to underestimate a hurricane season just because it might be less active than you'd expect so make sure to keep that in mind as well but yeah guys i guess that's it for this video i thank you guys for watching make sure to subscribe if you want to see more weather related content make sure to like if you like this video make sure to turn on post notifications if you want to see even more weather related content and i hope you guys have a good day